of power and precision. A place where performance rules. Power that answers instantly to the slightest command. that creates dreams for tomorrow's yet to come. Power in a world of hard work and dedication. Drag racing. No sport captures the imagination quicker, thrills the spirit of adventure more, or creates the breathless suspense like these super fast cars racing for the finish line at split second speed. A quarter mile in six to nine seconds is moving. Turn to ask the time of day, buy a soft drink, take a second look at your program, and you've missed the race. Even those who watch the action from start to finish, visit the pits, see the drivers, mechanics, and whole families working around the car. See only a minute fraction of what it takes to be a part of this fast-growing, dynamic sport. Yet they come by the thousands, the millions. For this is where it all happens. This is where they try to put it all together. The months of hard work, testing, changing. The new ideas, innovations, and hours of practice. Here they face their competition, three o'clock. The hours, days, and months suddenly become the reality Second. This is Jim Thompson, and drag racing is his world. Has been most of his life. Twenty years ago, when he became interested in the sport, it was just getting started. Back then, there weren't many sanctioned tracks around, and they used abandoned airstrips, or long stretches of hard, smooth ground. The operating standards and safety regulations they helped to establish then have grown to be the foundation of drag racing today. A drag racer doesn't just pull into a track, unload, and begin racing. First, his car must undergo a thorough technical inspection. Each racing category, including top fuel, funny car, and pro stock in the professional division, competition eliminator, and Superstock in the sports racing division. All have standard specifications that must be met if the car is to run in that category. The major difference between the two groups is in the method of starting. The professional category competes in heads up or even starts with only two lights. One amber for ready, one green for go. In the sports racing division, however, there are numerous classes within each of four categories and they utilize a handicap start system when cars from a slower class race against cars from one of the faster classes. In this way, cars of different weights, size, and speed with a great variety of regulated modifications can race against each other to determine one single champion for each of the four categories. NHRA tech inspectors know the regulations for each category and for the many classes within each category. Any infraction of the regulations and the racer is disqualified before he even gets his car on the track. 
The rules include the interior of the car as well, specifically safety equipment, such as seat belts, roll bars, and a myriad of other items for the protection of the driver. The National Hot Rod Association's safety record is an enviable one, and they intend keeping it that way. It's also one area on which every driver places a major emphasis. Finally, after hours of working and waiting, you get that first opportunity to test the track, to test the car, to put it all together and get it all on the ground. As you move through the pits and watch the racers getting their cars ready for a run, you can't help wondering how it's possible. There are over 1,500 cars registered to race on this track during this event, and only two cars can race at one time. It requires split-second timing, perfect coordination, and a lot of cooperation on everybody's part to get the job done. Pit control and staging are two vital elements in assuring a smooth, continuous flow of competitors to the starting line. Observers along the course and key personnel located around the track are in constant communication with the control tower, alerting the competition director and the staging director to any emergency conditions or changes in the flow of traffic. In another area of the tower, the timing and announcing personnel maintain an accurate but demanding pace recording and announcing the elapsed time and miles per hour of every car during every run. The clocks are electronically operated and triggered by a light beam located on the starting line. Similar light beams at the finish line accurately register the amount of time it's taken and at the same time the miles per hour is automatically computed. Time slips recording the elapsed time and top speed during each run are filled out from information relayed to a separate crew at the lower end of the track near the finish line. These slips are given to each driver, allowing him an opportunity to evaluate his performance and the performance of his car. And like on a funny car or fuel, if the engineer... Stringent requirements for both driver and car are only a part of the total safety program implemented and maintained by NHRA. A fully manned, well-trained safety caravan is strategically located around the track, ready to go into action instantly. Each morning before the track opens, they gather for a briefing on the day's events and a brief refresher on basic safety procedures. We got it made. How badly burned can he be uh, and still use the water on him? Well, if you're the first unit in and he's been burnt, let's cool him down right away because you can't grab him anyway. The next unit in will have the ice on it, and then we can ice him down from there. But let's use the water to try to cool him down if possible. No one likes to think about accidents, especially the drivers themselves. But it's a secure feeling to know that a well-equipped, efficient crew of safety experts is on hand in case of emergency. Many manufacturers involved in the racing field have tents or booths at every major event. This gives the racer a chance to discuss his problems, look at new products, or learn about new ideas under development and testing. Take tires, for instance. One of the most important factors involved with low elapsed time and miles per hour. Drag racers refer to it as putting it all on the ground, which simply means transferring all or as much as possible of the power generated by the engine to the asphalt. One car can require a number of different tire combinations. Very soft compound where it's very flexible and has the ability to grip on hard slippery surfaces to a hard compound with the ability to provide excellent grip on sticky surfaces. Variables like altitude, time of day, temperature and age of the track all play a vital role in the selection of the proper tire. A great deal of credit for many of the standard safety features found in today's production automobiles goes to the sport of racing and to the manufacturers and innovators of safety equipment. Drag racing's enviable safety record was achieved because manufacturers 
drivers and the National Hot Rod Association have left no stone unturned in providing the utmost in protection for car, driver, and spectator. With over 1,500 cars at this event alone, you can imagine some of the variations in size, weight, and horsepower a manufacturer has to consider in supplying the needs of each individual driver. Then add to that the fact that each car can, and many times does, require a number of different specifications in one piece of equipment to meet a variety of racing conditions. No discussion of drag racing would be complete without talking about the engine. And until you've looked inside a few engines, you've never really known the definition of precision, modification, or just pure imaginative engineering. Performance, reliability, power, and testing are an integral part of the manufacturer's involvement with drag racing and drag racers. It's this involvement which has brought about such rapid changes and a number of major improvements in the automotive field. Involvement means more than just producing parts and giving technical assistance. It means concern and effort in every phase of drag racing. All of these things are still only subtle undertones to the real reason why everyone is here. To take the top prize. After you or one of your team has done just that, won a national title and walked off with top money, it's even more apparent that the lion's share of credit goes to those long hours of hard work, weeks of planning, and months of testing, then working, changing, and testing again and again. When a driver isn't racing, then he's in the shop working and talking about racing. Hi, oh, Bob. How you doing? Need some help here? Yeah, sure could use some. Why don't you take this, uh, this rod assembly piston, put in and see the height, <coughs> what the height is out of the block. Okay. I'll go ahead and get another one ready to go. For anything particular on this? Oh, you know the last setup we had, what it was, it, you know, it turned out real well. Okay. It was about 900 if I remember right. I thought it was a real sweet pie, didn't you? Yeah, it was pretty good. I'd like to have another one just like it. <laughs> you're gonna have to if you're gonna be me. Yeah, you just do it right over there. No. <laughs> we won't have any trouble. You better we'll, watch me. We won't even have any carpet problems this time. I'm going to cheat a couple of horsepower on you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll get her checked out and see how we look here.
done it. With only a few minutes left, he's on the line, ready to try a backup run. And there's only time for this one try. It's right now, or not at all. Later, after it's over, and you're the holder of a new national speed record. It's a good feeling to hear the congratulations of your teammates. Tremendous amount of stress and strain put on the car every time it runs, which means it has to be checked constantly, worked on, and made ready for the next race. Which of your many competitors are likely to give you the toughest time? What are the conditions at this new track? And what do you have to change to get it all on the ground? Those of you who have followed Jim Thompson through this short but hectic period of a professional drag racer's life have now some idea of the dedication, hard work, and complex knowledge required to be a part of this fast-growing, exciting sport. It should be apparent that drag racers are a separate breed of people. An ordinary driver who thinks he's drag racing is really only speeding, and then under the most adverse conditions. A drag racer competing under controlled conditions on a safety-approved sanctioned track is safer than the ordinary driver who drives the family car 10, 15, or 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. Now that's not to say that drag racing isn't a dangerous sport. Anytime you push an engine two to 3,000 RPM over its designed red line and cover the quarter of a mile in six to 12 seconds, things are bound to happen. What the professional drag racer and the manufacturers who stand behind him are saying, however, is that every safety precaution possible is provided for the protection of the driver, the personnel who work around the track, and the spectator who comes to cheer his favorite car or driver. The years of knowledge, testing, and working with high-performance engines has paid off. Technical data compiled from thousands of races, hundreds of thousands of drivers under every conceivable condition, and from countless other manufacturers has been evaluated and integrated into the building of safety equipment that will stand up under that kind of speed. So the next time you visit a track, and I'm sure you will, just remember, Nine-tenths of what it takes to get the car here and to race it on the track has already been done and will be done again for the next race and the next.
68 for Hank Johnson, 223.32 miles an hour. A 674 at 214.79, the time for Dave Uhar. So the drive-by routes are <laughs> If it looks like he's changing a perfectly good set of tires or checking the air pressure again and again, just remember all the things he's considering to make his car perform its very best. As you're sitting in the stands watching car after car come to the line, then flash away towards the finish line, just remember every driver came there with the hope of putting it all together, proving he's the best in his class or category. Remember, too, the people behind the scenes who keep the cars moving smoothly, coordinate all the various activities around the track, keep it clear and ready for action, and are standing by, fully capable of handling any emergency. It will provide you with a deeper understanding, greater respect, and personal admiration for the sport of drag racing. For Jim Thompson and his teammates, the moment of truth has arrived. After hours of hard work, weeks of planning, months of testing, and a full year of racing in every part of the country, the efforts of many people come to the line here at the World Finals in Amarillo, Texas. It's been a great year, with a number of major wins, special awards, and national titles, a fitting reward for such a great effort. Now everything depends on the driver. The tremendous thrust of power from a finely tuned work of precision and the unseen hands of Lady Luck that guide the destiny of every competitor. In the time it takes to breathe deeply, it's over. Two world championships are theirs to add to an already long list of accomplishments. But more important, victory is proof that they put it all together helped to create the winning combination of car and driver. And in the end, that's what it's all about. Pride in performance. Pride in ability to meet the challenge and pride in accomplishment that proves they are among the best in this dynamic sport where victory or defeat is measured by the split second.